Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another top 10 video. In the last top 10 video, we actually spoke on the more underrated champions in the game, so it only makes sense that in the next one we talk about the most overrated ones, right? And for this list specifically, eesh, there's gonna be a lot of disagreements in the comments, and it only makes sense since there's not really a specific way to see how a champion is overrated. Now before we start off with the list, I do want to say, none of these champions are bad at all, but of course if they are on this list, it means that they're overrated, which pretty much just means that they're valued too highly. But enough with the yapping and let's start off with spot number 10. Starting off with spot number 10, and MSD is probably gonna dislike my channel for this one, and that is none other than Quicksilver, a summoner's choice champion that is loved by many due to different reasons, but of course he is on this list. His playstyle is pretty simple, you pretty much just want to build up as many whiplash debuffs as you can, and then try to detonate them with a medium light medium combo. I'm pretty sure we all know how good this champion is, but why exactly do I think he's overrated? The main problem that I have with Quicksilver is that his kit has a lot of things to offer, but a lot of these things don't really flow well together. A great example of this is his Wither debuff. You pretty much get this when you successfully dodge an opponent's attack. Getting this Wither debuff, which can be very crucial in a lot of scenarios, means that you're gonna have to sacrifice not hitting the opponent, meaning you're gonna be taking much longer to finish the fight. And so in scenarios where you need the Wither debuff, he's not really the best champion to go with, but because of all the things you have to keep an eye on and try to manage while playing this champion, it just makes me think he might not be worth it. Of course we all love to see the big red numbers, he can even do like 2 million damage, oh my god. The numbers always look good, but it's always good to remember what does it take for you to see such a big number. Hopefully that explains it, but I probably missed something. Moving on to spot number 9, we have Danny Moonstar. And for this one, I understand that it's a very odd choice to put her here, since she's not really one of the more popular champions in the game, right? Well, that's the case until you talk to people who think her buff is good. And in my opinion, her buff was not good enough. Her rotation is very tight and in my opinion the buff pretty much just made her window a little bit more open. Sure in generic matches you can sort of time everything well, but as soon as the AI decides to not cooperate with you then everything's pretty much just going to be falling off. But speaking of her utility, she was created as a Nick Fury counter, but there's so many other champions who can do that job a lot better. Not in the sense of cancelling his second life mode, but in the sense of finishing the fight much faster. The champions that she's made to counter counter her, and so what's the point of even using Danny in the first place? Now of course if you don't have any other options, sure Danny's the way to go, but if you've been playing the game long enough and have a decent roster, then there's absolutely no reason for you to be using her. Spot number 8 we have Adam Warlock and he's pretty much just here for the sake of being here, I don't know. We all know how good he is and how big his numbers are, but I specifically put him here for all the struggles that you go through when you actually try to use him. Moments like the opponent being aggressive when you want to start your counter, moments when you hesitate to either hit the opponent or dash back, making you lose your sovereignty counter. Like I said, he's pretty much just here for the sake of being here. Yeah, he's great, yeah, his numbers are really good if you play him well, but the moment you don't play him well, he's pretty much gonna be one of the worst options you can bring. And of course, this all depends on skill level, and you can pretty much just say this is a skill issue, but I feel like he fits to be in this position. Spot number 7, I know you see him. Doom 2, Failure Doom, Doom Light, Budget Doom, and of course this is an old story, but it's one that's sort of still relevant up until this point. The moment this guy was announced, everyone was going crazy. 
They were saying he was Doom too, and there were even people saying he might be better than the original Doom, which nah. And a lot of people already loved Mystic Doom, and so when this guy was announced, the whole community was going crazy, but the only thing this guy is good for is against bishops. That's his niche, that's his best matchup by far, but the moment you put him in a normal fight in a common scenario, he's not really that great. His numbers are too low, it's better to bring Hercules or something. If there was a way to increase his damage in common scenarios, then he'd be much better of a champion. And that's a little sad because he's one of the better looking champions in the game. But then again, if there's a bishop, then this dude takes like 20 seconds to finish the fight. And so basically my whole point is against bishop good, against other champions mid. Spot number 6, we have Void. And for this one, I sort of don't understand it myself, because Void is a personal favorite for a lot of people in the community, but the moment I see Void gameplay, it's clear to see that there's always going to be a better option. Now of course the game is based around having the right counter, having the right immunities, as well as how fast you can finish the fight, but Void for me, I just don't see it man. In terms of heal reversal, sure, he's one of the best, but he's not actually the best. The best is either Ant-Man or Anti-Venom, which pretty much just confuses me a lot. I also don't have him ranked up and haven't really used him a ton, and so, I don't know man, it's really just weird to me. It might be one of those cases where people tend to use him more since it's the champion that they grew to love and use a lot. But as for me, I just don't see it man, I'm sorry. His debuff placement takes a bit too long for my taste, his damage isn't that great. The game is evolving and there's more and more better options for heal reversal. And so, yeah, I really don't get it man. Spot number 5, Mo Man. And unfortunately for this guy, they gave him a completely unnecessary nerf which ruined his utility, but he sort of still has the damage. A while back, they actually removed his true accuracy while you're in frenzy mode, which is sort of his damage dealing phase, which in my opinion just puts him in an anti-venom position. It's a case where you have to sacrifice utility to deal more damage, and in my opinion, this nerf just killed the character for me. The reason why I think he's overrated, however, is there's still a lot of people who think he's still as good as he was, and sure, he is still as good in terms of damage, but in terms of utility, there is absolutely no reason to recommend this guy at all. I feel like even if they revert his nerf, it won't really do too much. Of course, the Mole Man lovers will be happy, but looking at the skill class today, there's a lot of champions who do what he does a lot better. It's very sad what they did to him, the dude was already short, fat, the barber messed him up. Spot number 4, we have Spider-Man Supreme. And for this one, it's sort of the same with the Void situation, but for this one, I actually have the character taken up, so I can sort of play him and see what type of champion he is, and after playing with this dude, why? I have no idea why he has such a big fan base. The dude comes with so many disadvantages to the point where it's not even worth it in my opinion. The good things that he does is he can nullify buffs but it's not even consistent enough. He can go invisible but as soon as the opponent misses you then invisibility goes on cooldown for like 10 seconds, what? At least he has some good damage, but once you start considering everything else, like him having a small health pool, his block proficiency not being good enough, the inconsistent nullify, the invisibility that goes away just like this, there's absolutely no reason for you guys to be using this champ if you have Kitty Pride. Now it's always a different case whenever it's your favorite champion or you just think it's fun, but meta-wise as well as other aspects of the game, this guy's not that great. I do feel like he'd be an amazing 7 star addition however, since he is a bit tricky on defense, but even then if you have a decent counter or even just any champion really, he's gonna be a walk in the park. Spot number 3 we have a personal favorite of mine and that is Baron Zemo. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know the story already but 
Upon release and after Karate Mike released a couple of videos, the hype was real and everyone was on the Zemo train. And even when the champion was released and people could actually test him, he was very good and performed pretty well. The problem in my opinion came from two things. The first is the nerf to root, which allowed the opponent to use the SP3 while they're rooted and the whole playstyle of Baron Zemo is you reach two bars of power, throw the SP2, root the opponent and then go in and go ham, build up your bleed debuffs, throw the SP1 and then restart the cycle. The Zemo lock is basically where you keep the opponent rooted for the whole time, not giving them a chance to throw any special attack. The second change that killed this character is his actual nerf. They changed his armor up buff into a resist passive, which sure you could say it's better since it gives a lot more benefits, but they did increase its duration so I'm not too sure about that. They also gave a limit to how many fury buffs he can get. These are all the changes that affected him, but even then, I think he's still overrated. In short term fights, he's not that great. You pretty much have to go to the SP2 in order to deal some damage. In medium to long fights, that's where he truly shines. He's also a good defender, but the level of hype that this character was given pretty much makes him seem like a disappointment now. Spot number two, we have a champion that was a must have upon release and one that got a lot of free deaths in battlegrounds and that champion of course is none other than Photon. Photon is a champion that shifted the meta upon release. Not really for her value as an attacker but mainly as a defender. She's still a very scary defender, mainly due to two things. The first is that while she's in her pure light form, you can dex her special attacks. The second is her SP2, which is passively unblockable once she's in her pure light form. And these two things combined pretty much just come together and give you a very big and bad defender. Upon release, everyone was dying to her, she was an insta ban, and everyone had the same thought of saying she's a must have, but nowadays a lot more people know how to counter her, and sure she's still a troublesome defender, but she doesn't get free kills as easy as she used to. And this is sort of the case every month a new champion drops, the first week no one knows how to counter her, the second people sort of start getting it, and then a few months later they become less of an issue. The moment players get a certain champion and play them, they pretty much know how to counter them as well. And during that period of time where not a lot of people have the champion, that's when they struggle a lot more. She is an amazing champion, one that still has a lot of value as an attacker as well as on defense. But of course her being on this list means that I think she's a bit overrated. And moving on to spot number one, who do I think is the most overrated champion in the game? Well that's simple, it's none other than Morbius. The big bad vampire dude who was hyped up like nobody's business, and I think he was actually hyped up for two main reasons. The first is that people actually had to pay for him, which gives people this sort of incentive to defend the product that they bought. And the second is that he came out at a time where he was actually a tagged defender or attacker or whatever. He came out in the Decay meta and Decay as a whole pretty much just made certain fights completely. But basically he was dropped at a perfect time. Now when you look at his kit and all the things that he has to offer, he definitely is a great champion but I don't think he's that great. In my opinion, he's just Mantis Light. His playstyle is built around his SP2, where he does a lot more damage based on the number of bleed debuffs that he has on the opponent. Now sure, the number is really big, but the chance to actually inflict bleeds on the opponent is not too great. And looking at him now, he's pretty much just a average champion. He's not a phenomenal attacker, he's not that crazy of a defender. In my opinion, he's just a pretty overhyped champion, simply because he's Morbius and we all know the memes, and because he was the first 7 star that you could actually buy. And that's pretty much it for the top 10 most overrated champions in the game. Let me know down in the comments who you guys thought was gonna be on the list. Also don't forget to join my discord group, the link will be down in the description. And uh, yeah, 
I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!